DFA. Welcome back in. Today we're going to be hitting on some of our favorite wide receiver must starts for week 11. Let's ride. Let's just jump right into our rankings for this week. We're going to start at the top. So we got Devontae Adams at one. Surprise, surprise. Tyreek at two. Stephon Diggs, A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, Jamar Chase, Mike Evans, Justin Jefferson, Chris Godwin, C.D. Lamb, D.K. Metcalf, and Keenan Allen to wrap out our wide receiver ones. Mm -hmm. Our wide receiver twos are Marquise Brown, Tyler Lockett, Deontay Johnson, D.J. Moore, Michael Pittman, Adam Thielen, Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin, Brandon Cooks, Jalen Waddle, and Devontae Smith with T. Higgins wrapping it up there. Our wide receiver threes, Mike Williams, Hunter Renfro, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, Corey Davis, Jacoby Myers, Emmanuel Sanders, Rashad Bateman, Jarvis Landry, Marvin Jones, Cole Beasley, and Kenny Galladay to wrap up our wide receiver threes. Cody, take it away. Let us know some of your must-start wide receivers for this week. Yeah, I do just want to say this really quickly before we jump into the discussion. We, we always talk about guys we have to start. A guy that I'm looking to fade or sit this week is going to be Terry McLaurin. Like if there's a uh, an upper echelon kind of guy that I'm looking to fade, it will be McLaurin. Carolina giving up the third fewest half PPR points per game to wide receivers. They've allowed the fourth fewest yards to receivers on the year and their second and pass DVOA. So if you have other options, like the guys we're about to talk about, I would think about sitting Terry McLaurin in that matchup. But on to the guys that I actually like for this week. I feel like I've talked about this guy for the past three, four, five weeks, it, it feels like. But as long as he keeps getting good matchups and he keeps putting up numbers, I'm going to keep talking about Hunter Renfro. This dude has three games this year with fewer than eight targets, and those games were seven, six, and five. Recent performance, he was wide receiver 14 and wide receiver 10 the past two weeks and half PPR scoring, and now he gets a matchup with Cincy, who kind of middle of the road in terms of fantasy points against and the, the production they've allowed through through the air. But if you look at his matchup in the slot, he's going to get former Steeler slot corner Mike Hilton, who has allowed the six most passing yards in slot coverage, and he's allowed a 110 NFL pass rating when targeted. So don't be surprised if, you know, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, when you're watching highlights, you don't see one of the on-brand, typical Hunter Renfro kind of highlights where he's putting this dude in a blender. The other guy I want to talk about real quickly, you mentioned we have D-Hop kind of down here. And the you know the the wide receiver three range. He did not practice on Wednesday. Again, the Wednesday ones aren't the ones that we need to be the most worried about. But considering that he hasn't practiced at all with the past two weeks, at least week and a half, it is a little bit noteworthy. Christian Kirk has put up 13 catches for 149 yards on 14 targets in the past two weeks, and that's obviously been without Kyler Murray as well. So if Kyler can get back this week. That's obviously going to be a boost for him. I like uh, Christian Kirk here, whether or not D-Hop can suit up. Yeah, for me, I'm going to kick things off with uh, my guy. And, hey, we finally saw this man find the end zone, and then it's Jacoby Myers. Like, I mean – I'm, I'm surprised I'm surprised we made it four minutes without you just talking about that off the top. Yeah, I mean, we absolutely love to see it. I, I mean, it. It took him long enough, but he finally got there, broke a tackle, and found his way into the end zone. The whole team just went out there. I mean, the, I, the entire team, offense, yeah, defense, literally. everybody went out there and, you know, congratulated him. So got that monkey off his back. And, hey, the, the fantasy gods have shined down on him because this week he gets the juicy matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. But if you look at Jacoby Myers on the season, 7.6 targets per game with a 24% target share. 51% of the uh, Hivas routes have come from the slot, which is very important, which we're about to talk about. 28.2% market share of the air yards, 11 deep targets, 11 fantasy points per game. He gets a juicy matchup this week against Avery Williams, who has just been absolutely booty this year. 75% uh, catch rate allowed with 128.5 passer rating on the season. We absolutely want to target the Falcons in the slot. And Jacoby Myers, six most among all wide receivers with a 51% slot snaps share. So I really like Jacoby Myers this week. I think he's somebody that you can play with confidence this week in a great matchup against Atlanta. There is some concern is do they do uh, to what they've been doing lately and just steamrolling the Falcons. We'll see because they are going to be shorthanded. They're going to have Kyle Pitts, possibly no Cordell Patterson, which is going to hurt. But I think that this, this, this game can at least stay close enough for them to be able to uh, get them the ball. And they absolutely crushed, uh, 
the Browns last week, and he still found the end zone late in the game on that one as well. So I like Jacoby Myers quite a bit here in this matchup. Next up for me, we'll have to monitor uh, Allen Robinson. He is dealing with a uh, what's believed to be a minor injury as well. I'm not really concerned. He's a guy that hasn't really doesn't really practice much all year. Like he just doesn't really hit the practice field all that much. Gets in some limited. He didn't practice today. I really don't care about Wednesday practice like we've already mentioned. But I think if he can get out there, I do like Allen Robinson. We kind of saw him last week or excuse me, uh, before their bye against Pittsburgh, have his best game of the year, which, I mean, wasn't great, but he still had four catches for 68 yards, 10.8 fantasy points. Again, not great, but uh, this is a game where I think it's going to have some shootout potential. And, you know, if you look at Justin Fields over his last two games that he played, I mean, he really was starting to put it all together, really starting to come on. So uh, I do think this is a really solid matchup uh, for Allen Robinson as long as he can get out there and play, which I don't see why he would not. He's going to get a good matchup against Anthony Everett on the outside. So I, he's, he's not going to see as much Marlon Humphrey there. So I, I'm happy to see that. And then in the same game, same game, give me Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman looks like the alpha that we thought he could be so far in his young career. He hasn't really had that smash bot game, mainly because he has not found the end zone. And I think that time is coming for him. He's had a couple opportunities where, you know, either Lamar Jackson missed him, he dropped the ball, but uh, he has seen six targets or more in every single game he's played this year. And so I like him quite a bit. Uh, this week against the Bears. The Bears' pass defense is not very good. They allow the third most fantasy points to wide receivers on the season as well. So I like Rashad Bateman here in this matchup against the Bears. So those are the guys that I really wanted to hit on. Of course, you know, we could have hit on a few other guys. I do think somebody like Kitty Galladay makes some sense. A uh, good matchup here for them against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay secondary has been absolutely uh, atrocious this year. So I do like him. Uh, Corey Davis against Miami. Don't mind him either, but I did want to mention those guys really quickly as well as all guys that I think you could absolutely start this week for week 11. With that being said, I appreciate everybody checking out the video. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.